Hey, good morning everyone. Welcome to our service this morning. Little Sprocket's up and about. I see that giving her a treat gets her attention a little bit more. <laughs> just want to say thanks for joining us this morning. Let me just get things set up here. It's uh, wonderful to be back with you live on Facebook to celebrate our worship this morning together. And uh, just a few thank yous and um, a couple of announcements before we move into our service this morning. Well, first off, thank you uh, once again to Nancy and Michael Gibson for their amazing uh, music that they've shared with us this morning. I've been trying to share it with, uh, with the Knox folks, but I'm having problems getting it linked across. But it's all on the Bethune page if you want to see it. And uh, I know uh, this week uh, many of you will be uh, sending your children off to university and college and for those of you who will be experiencing uh, a little bit of em empty nest syndrome my thoughts and prayers are with you and for those of you who are heading off for your first or second third fourth whatever year it is of uh, college or university all the best to you this year as you make your way through your courses and uh, know that all of our thoughts and best wishes are, are with you all. Also, on October 3rd, we will be heading back into our sanctuaries for both Bethune and Knox. I'll watch for an email that will be coming along uh, in, the, in the near future to let you know uh, what is going on and uh, all the protocols that will have to be followed in order for this to, to happen and take place. I think that's it for announcements for now. If there is uh, anything else that I've missed, let me know and I'll be sure to send it out and share it with everybody. So, uh, Sprocket's getting a little, a little anxious here, so I guess that she's telling me it's time to move along with our service. And so may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. For thousands of years, indigenous people have walked in this land on their own country. Their relationship with the land is at the center of their lives. And so we acknowledge the Chippewa, Iroquois, and Algonquin people past, present, and their emerging leaders for their stewardship of this land throughout the ages. Let us now move to our call to worship. What fragrance makes you happy? What fragrance makes you feel safe? A favorite flower? The beach or lake? Trees or grass? Food cooking? Coffee brewing? While we gather today to worship God who creates the flowers, who calls fig trees to put forth figs, vines to blossoms, and to be fragrant. Excuse me while I put Sprocket down on the floor. Come here, you little monkey. There we go. Yes, here she is in all her glory. <laughs> well, let us pray. God who loves us and whose creation we experience in so many ways by sight and hearing, touch, taste, and smell. May we experience your love and care as we gather, worship, and pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As we move into our scriptures now, may we remember that even as we seek understanding, our minds too often shelter us from the realities that we might uncover. So may we have the courage to hear and hold truths found within these words. Our first scripture reading this morning comes from the Song of Solomon's or a Song of Songs, it all depends which uh, version of the Bible you're reading through, both names work. And it is uh, Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verses 8 through 13. I hear my lover's voice. He comes running over the mountains, racing across the hills to me. My lover is like a gazelle, with a, like a young stag, where he stands beside the wall. He looks in through the window and glances through the lattice. My lover speaks to me. Come then, my love, my darling, come with me. The winter is over, the rains have stopped. In the countryside, the flowers are in bloom. This is the time for singing. The song of doves is heard in the fields. Figs are beginning to ripen. The air is fragrant with blossoming vines. Come then, my love, 
my darling, come with me. And our responsive psalm this morning once again comes from Everyday Psalms by James Taylor. And it is Psalm 45. Advice for a new adventure. You are my dearest friend. You are the brother I never had. I trust you. Your instincts are sound. Your life is above reproach. So stand tall and step out confidently. You know what you stand for. You know what's right. Have the courage to take a stand. Defend your values vigorously. Your words will penetrate to the heart of the issue. Your actions will expose the pretenses of your critics. Because you refuse to be swayed by opinion polls, because you maintained your integrity, you will find favor with both God and humans. But beware, the beautiful people and the media personalities will compete to call themselves your friends. Do not be seduced by their charms and do not forget who you are. People in high places will flatter you. They will ask for your advice. How can you resist? The weather will want to shower you with the wealthy will want to shower you with gifts. How can you refuse? The camp followers will cling to you with perfect teeth and plastic virtue that will try to seduce you. How can you ignore them? Hold tight to your principles when you enter the world of the rich and famous, the powerful and the ruthless. Keep your childlike innocence and all you meet will become your children. You'll be, beloved, be a beloved grandfather to all. Then you will be rich then you will richly deserve your reputation and people everywhere, everywhere will recognize your wisdom. And our second scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Mark, chapter 7, verses 1 through 8, 14 and 15, and then 21 to 23. Some Pharisees and teachers of the law who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus. They noticed that some of the disciples were eating their food with hands that were ritually unclean. That is, they had not washed them in the way the Pharisees said people should. For the Pharisees, as well as the rest of the Jews, follow the teaching they receive from their ancestors. They do not eat unless they wash their hands in the proper way. Nor do they, do they eat anything that comes from the market unless they wash it first. And they follow many other rules which have, they have received, such as the proper way to wash cups, pots, copper bowls, and beds. So the Pharisees and the teachers of the law asked Jesus, Why is it that your disciples do not follow the teachings handed down by your ancestors, but instead eat with ritually unclean hands? Jesus answered them, How, how right Isaiah was when he prophesied about you. You are hypocrites, just as he warned, as he wrote. These people say God honors me with their words, but their heart is really for, but their heart is really far away from me. It is no use for them to worship me because they teach human rules, as though they were my laws. You put aside God's commands and only human, and, o and obey human teachings. Then Jesus called the crowd to him once more and said to them. Listen to me, all of you, and understand. Then is, there is nothing that goes into you from the outside which can make you richly unclean. For from inside, from your heart, come the evil ideas which lead you to immoral things, to rob, kill, commit adultery, be greedy, and do all the sorts of evil things, deceit, indecency, jealousy, slander, pride, and folly. These, thing, these evil things come from inside you and make you unclean. Well, may the Spirit bless us with wisdom and wonder as we ponder the meaning of these lives, of these words for our lives. Excuse me, just one second. I've got an anxious little puppy this morning. I don't know what's going on. Anyway, I hopefully she'll settle down now and uh, won't bother us anymore. Well, it's time to move on now to our Learning with Children episode, or our, as I like to call it, the Young at Heart, because each of us has that child within us. And uh, today's story is entitled, A Letter from James. 
Whenever people in the early church came together, they shared food and remembered stories about Jesus and what Jesus taught about living in God's way. They would talk together and, and listen to one another. There were many letters written to people in these churches. They were written to encourage the first Christians as they followed the ways of Jesus. Now some of the letters were saved in part and became part of our Bible. One of the letters kept was from a person called James. Now James was a leader of the church of Jerusalem. Many people think he was the brother of Jesus. But James filled his letter with ideas and advice on how we should live as followers of Jesus. And his letter goes as such. Dear friends, you may not have heard from me before, but I too am a follower of Jesus. I have some important words for you. Remember that God is always good. Every act of goodness is inspired by God who created everything, including light. Live in God's light. Be quick to listen and slow to speak. Be slow to get angry. And when you do get angry, don't stay angry. Instead, quietly listen for the word of God, which has the power to change your lives. Look for God's light in others and become a mirror, a mirror image of God's love for all. It's not enough to hear what God wants us to do. We must do it. It's not enough to say what God wants us to say. We must do it. We are blessings when we do. Care for those who are in need. This is what is faithful to God. Well, bye for now. I am your brother in Christ, James. Let us pray. Holy One, <clears throat> excuse me. Holy One, may the light of your love shine in me that I might be a lamp of compassion, illuminating the way of justice and peace. Amen. So my friends, a question, two questions actually. What do you believe about God? And how do you act on that belief? You see, today our scriptures put forth a challenge for us to find our connection between what we believe about God and the actions that we take each and every day. And while our actions may vary, God is a stability in our lives with actions of love and generosity. Now I included the scripture from the Song of Solomon today, mainly because we never really share any passages from this book. But it's a wonderful book celebrating poetry and love. And one cannot have enough poetry or love, right? And within this writing, the lovers respond and act on their words. Now if we stop, if we look, if we listen, we will find that our world is, an abundant, and, is abundant and full of love, as is this beautiful poetic scene. Thanks be to God. We are called to respond in faithful living, confident that this is most certainly true. Our other scripture readings come from the book of James. Here is a little back history for you about this book. Now the book of James is a bit of an outlier in the New Testament, as it is commonly uh, considered part of the Bible's wisdom literature. It is attributed to James, the brother of Jesus, who is portrayed in the Gospels as not believing in Jesus and his mission when Jesus was alive. But having experienced the resurrected Christ, he became a prominent leader of the Church of Jerusalem. Now I've read that some scholars consider this letter to be the earliest Christian writing apart from Galatians. And it was apparently written at a time when the fledgling church was experiencing oppression and was composed for the 12 tribes in dispersion, Jewish Christians living outside of Jerusalem. And because of this intended audience, those hearing these words would be quite aware of the Jewish traditions and teachings. God is given the title, the God of Lights. And in this, we hear the echo of the creation story in which God creates light. And James calls the recipients of the letter the first fruits of his creatures. 
Now in Jewish tradition, the first fruits of any harvest were extremely significant. The Israelites were required to bring these as an offering to God. It seems James conveys to his readers their significance as participants in God's great harvest. The letter encourages the recipients to understand the importance of listening over speaking, patience over anger, meekness over brashness, and action over inaction. James pulls no punches when he declares and describes what truth faith looks like. Care for the vulnerable, the widows and orphans, and moral living that is not having a moral obligation to the existing state of affairs, but based on the goodness of God. Now the importance of listening is a skill I think we should all embrace. Now I read an article by Laura K. Rock recently. Now Dr. Rock is a renowned uh, physician and professor at Harvard University. And she writes that we should stop answering feelings with facts. And it made me think of a friend of mine who one, uh, it made me think of a friend of mine. And one day a friend mentioned that they had had a heart attack and some other pretty hard news for them to digest. Now I told her with the best of intentions that she was taken to the best hospital for that in our area. Now, perhaps some of us would have said that it's the best that it, that it happened now. Or, wow, you had the best surgeon in this area for your operation. Now, it may seem good to offer these types of comments to help ease someone's anguish, but all of the above are facts and have little to do with emotions. So while it's helpful to know that you're in good hands, it avoids very real emotions such as fear and anxiety, sadness, anger, or other uncomfortable feelings. And when our feelings are avoided, a layer of frustration is often added into this whole mix. So rather than nurture trust, this focusing on facts versus feelings can actually foster alienation. Now on the other hand, when our feelings are supported, not only does it make us feel better, but it actually helps effective problem solving by activating the executive center of our brain. So Dr. Rock puts it this way. When we recognize and respond to emotion effectively, we create an alliance and a more productive interaction. When people feel heard and respected, they are more likely to be honest and open to considering our advice. Paradoxically, when we address emotions, bef when we address emotion before cognition, we actually shift the activity of the brain away from the more emotion-focused areas to areas responsible for reasoning and processing, such as the prefrontal cortex. And in addition, emotion is critical to decision making. Without acknowledging emotion, key data about what is important to the person is lost. So our strategy to improve emotional interactions is to use the initials G-I-V-E, give. Now the prompt give stands for G, get that it's an emotion and just listen. I identify. You looked worried. V validate. I see you're scared. And E explore. Tell me more. Now this article is geared at cultivating greater communication skills in a clinical setting. But honestly, it really has a universal application. And while my reflex may be to fix a situation with helpful facts, I find simply listening, providing a gentle touch, or simply saying, this is a lot to digest, has much better outcomes. And I remind myself that there's nothing greater or more empowering 
than being heard and seen. I'm sure being on the receiving end, it must feel great to have such gentle support to have my feelings recognized. And as the above quote from the article suggests, often once I've been heard, it's much easier for me to mobilize, problem solve, and take positive steps. So my friends, may we all give, G-I-V-E, get, identify, explore, validate and explore a little more and be kind and comforting allies for one another. Amen. Well, our minute for mission this morning is entitled 535, New Ministries Embrace the Spirit. Thank you for giving good ideas a chance to fly. There is no doubt that the church is in the midst of a radical transition. What does the future hold? And honestly, no one knows for certain. But one thing is sure. The best way to fail is to try nothing. And the only way to succeed is to experiment by doing something new. And that's where you come in. Your gifts through mission and service, service support innovation through our churches Embracing the Spirit grants. Embracing the Spirit is a grant program supported by mission and service. And any church called by God to pursue a great ministry idea can apply to Embracing the Spirit for funding support. Now, if, you're, if you have the bulletin and um, are able to go online, you will be able to see in the bottom right hand corner of the interactive embracing the spirit online map the number 535 and it's highlighted in bold red the number which refers to new ministry projects award grants is steadily rising 535 is the tip of the iceberg and since 2016 embracing the spirit has awarded over three million six hundred thousand dollars to help communities of faith develop new ministries so want to be inspired? Simply click on the map pins and read the description. You'll be amazed at the new ways congregations across the United Church are joining God's mission. Take it a step further and connect with one, of, with one that piques your interest. Learn about ways your community of faith can grow its vision and practice of ministry. Now the last Embracing the Spirit grant round on 2021 is now open and applications are due on October 15th. Now, even if you don't have new ministry ideas that you want to pursue right now, by simply making a mission and service gift, you're helping our United Church network with the support with and support others, striving to live out God's mission in new ways. Thank you for giving good ideas a chance to fly. So check it out, my friends, and thank you to everyone who takes the time and effort to help around our church uh, through your walks around the village, the grass cutting, the cleaning, the uh, weeding of the gardens, the, um, the renovations, the, everything. There's so much that's going on and so many people involved in so many different things that make both Knox and Bethune a very vital part of our communities. So thank you to each and every one of you for doing that. And I also want to thank each of you who have continued to make your donations to either Knox or Bethune Church through your PAR program, through donations, through the uh, donation button on the Bethune website, and through uh, being in touch with our treasurers. If you have not done so and would like to uh, share in uh, this wonderful ministry of ours, get in touch with me and I'll let you know uh, the contacts for each church so that you can make your donation to the church of your choice. Thank you so much to everyone for all that you've been doing. So let us pray. God of lights, we pause to bring ourselves and our resources to contribute to God's work. Accept our offerings of time and skill, listening and speaking, and may they help spread your care and attention, we pray. Amen. Well, we move now to our prayers of the people, and as I say, this is a, because this is an online forum, I will not mention names of people at this point in time, but if there is someone for whom you would like to have prayer said, please don't hesitate to be in touch. And thank you to everyone who have reached out uh, in that manner, and I continue to pray for your friends and loved ones at this time. So let us pray. Draw us close as we pray with those who are unwell. 
with those facing treatments which we, f which we fear. Managing chronic illness and living with mental or physical challenges. Draw us close as we pray and care for each of these people. Draw us close as we pray with those who are struggling in relationships with family, with friends, or colleagues, and facing uncertainties. Draw us close as we pray and care for these people. Draw us close as we pray for the situations and places that concern us, for those suffering drought and firefighters throughout our country, for those in Haiti because of the earthquake, for everyone all around us. Draw us close as we pray and care for each and every person on this planet. Draw us close as we rejoice and pray with those who celebrate continued care, fresh starts, new college and university beginnings, and as well as the end of difficult times. Draw us close as we pray and care. Amen. Well, my friends, as we continue our lives and our worship this week, we go ready to pay attention to what is around us, listen to what we need to hear, and to speak with courage and with kindness and with justice. Amen. Well, have yourselves a wonderful week. This is the coming up to the last full week. Oh, sorry, sorry about that. This is the last full week of summer holidays. So kids and teachers and every educational person, secretaries, custodians, everyone who's heading back to school after this week, may God's blessings be with you. Thank you for taking such good care of our children. And uh, just kids, play safe, okay? Wear your masks. You use your hand sanitizer. We can't do it without you. May the Lord, mighty God, bless and keep you forever. Grant you peace, perfect peace, courage in every endeavor. Lift up your eyes and see God's face. And God's grace forever. May the Lord, mighty God, bless and keep you forever. Have a wonderful week, friends, as we move into our last long weekend of the summer and go about your days and weeks with your heads high and your hearts open, whooshing love to everyone that you meet. God bless. Take care. <laughs>